Being the leader of the free world is never going to be cheap. But even so, some have condemned the amount that British police forces have ended up paying towards President Trump's controversial trip to the UK earlier on this year. The National Police Chiefs Council says the final bill will be nearly £18 million. Pounds. That's thought to be far higher than the bill for security at Harry and Meghan's wedding, with security at that event estimated to be up to £4 million. Pounds. Princess Eugenie's wedding tomorrow is a far smaller event, but even so, policing is estimated by some to cost as much as £2 million. Pounds. So why does it cost so much to police these big events? And is it really fair for already stretched police forces to pick up the tab? Well, with me is Peter Kirkham, former Detective Chief Inspector with the Met. Hi, thanks Nothing. for joining us. It seems like a lot of money. It is, and, and these things do take a lot of planning. Uh, they take a lot of implementation. There's a lot of hidden cost, as well as the obvious cost. I mean, you were at the, the wedding of Harry. You, you saw the number of police officers and the number of different functions uh, that they have to do. But there's a whole hidden sort of depth to it as well, all the pre-event security. It so much money. Uh, it, it's just simply the number of officers that end up having to be paid. And like I say, it's not just for on the day. There's, there's the, all the planning, all the preparation, all the pre-event security So who pays for that like in that. the long run? Who, who has to foot that bill? I mean, in the long run, everything is paid for by the taxpayer. So there's sort of two questions here, really. There's the general question of do the taxpayers think it's value for money? And, and the argument around royal weddings, certainly major royal weddings, is that there's a tourism gain and so sort of they, there's a net gain on the whole thing uh, which is a reasonable argument you know I don't know the ins and outs of that but there's a reasonable argument for that but things like Trump's visit um, I don't think there was a tourism sort of gain from that so that's just simple cost um, and, and that was to facilitate a, a state visit which was more about ego I think than than anything else do we have enough police officers to even cover these events? We, we don't, because that's the second question. The question is, does it come out of the normal policing budget? Well, one way or another, quite a lot of it certainly will. There is scope for the Home Office to provide additional funding, uh, but some of that comes from funding taken from the overall policing budget at the beginning of the year anyway. Um, and it's rarely the whole thing, and it's quite often as little as 50 or 60% of the cost. So that is, is, is born. But even if the costs are replaced, on the days those officers are policing that event, they're not policing ordinary communities and doing the ordinary policing tasks. So it has a huge impact on ordinary policing. So does that mean when there's a royal wedding or when um, a leader like Trump comes along, we, in, in some parts of the country, are less safe as a result? Very much so. Um, there would be fewer officers doing routine policing tasks in significant numbers of forces. With the cuts to policing now, so pl police forces have no contingency, no resilience, they can't even do the day job uh, properly. Um, when they're needed to require, uh, required to provide aid to other forces for big events, they can't provide very much. So whereas 10, 15 years ago, something like Harry's Wedding would have been dealt with primarily by the Metropolitan Police, Thames Valley Police, Surrey Police, maybe a couple of the neighbouring forces, so five or six. Um, this time round, because no one's got very much to help with, um, I'm told there was something like getting on for 20 forces provided assistance of some sort or another. So those 20 forces, all their communities, had fewer officers doing what they should have been doing that day if they were simply lent on that day. But if they were officers who had rest days cancelled, those rest days are now going to have to be taken another day, and so that, that missing cop in their communities... And did we not day. see accommodation being quite a challenge um, at the time as well? It was around Trump's visit. It was a major issue because, because of the number of officers uh, because of the fears of, of public disorder and, and protests. They were sleeping that needed on camp beds in gymnasiums. Yeah, th th there was lots of, of accommodation sorted out, and the majority of it was fine, but there was that one e um, example, I think it was in Essex, uh, where it was totally unacceptable, and, and when it became apparent on social media, that was what expected corrective, uh, corrective moves were taken. Okay. But that will cost money as well. Indeed, so. So the bottom line is uh, we have to do it, we need to do it, because we either need to keep, uh, we've talked about the royals and, and the benefits on tourism, you know. That, that can be discussed and the figures can be added up. But if there is a, there is a leader of the free world coming along, we need to do our bit. Absolutely, and that, that's a political decision. What facility do we provide? What do we say, yeah, you can come and do that? Um, it's the same with protests. We facilitate protest, and there's a cost to that. We facilitate things like Nottingham Carnival and things like that every year that all have a cost. Um, and it's a, it's a public decision what they think they're willing to pay for. Um, but that should be additional 
It should be factored into the policing budget. It shouldn't be something that the police are expected to pay. And how much of that can be, um, you know, uh, uh, taken back to the palace or to the American embassy or whatever? Because, of course, when you when you um, police football stadia, the, the football clubs have to pay, don't they? To a certain extent, they only pay for what's inside the ground, yeah. the policing inside the ground, and they've most of them have really reduced that to the bare bones and, and leading, actually, to some of the disorder we're now starting to see and coming back. But the policing of the area outside, the policing of the railway station, Stations, all that policing, that doesn't come from the football clubs. That's a real question mark that, that needs to be asked because the football clubs aren't, the Premier League football clubs aren't exactly poor. They're paying ridiculous amounts of money to their stars, mm. and but they're expecting the taxpayer to subsidise the policing of their crowds getting to and from the grounds. We need to ask some questions about that because there is a crisis in policing. Policing isn't capable of delivering its ordinary functions at the moment and to lose money on things where people could be rightly expected to pay. I mean, we're seeing these things about the public being expected to pay twice for community warden schemes in mm. villages in Somerset and such like. You know, the football clubs surely have got to do their bit before the taxpayers hit again. It's good to talk to you as always. Come back soon. Thanks, Peter. Thank you. Thank you. Uh,